Hello, I'm Daniela. In today's video, I'm going to show how to make page dangles, specifically for fabric books. These can be used in junk journals as well. It's just an added interest, an interactive element that will hang from your page. It's a perfect place to use ribbons and charms that you love. You can even use beads. Or you can use just the ribbon. It kind of is a built-in bookmark. There are so many variations of this depending on the ribbon that you use. You can use fabric or lace. And as for beads, you can really theme the beads to go with your design. I'm using a lot of Christmas elements because this is going in my Stitch the Season journal. So let me show you how I do it. So this is an example of a dangle. It's a little piece of ribbon and something that dangles off a book. And here's another version. It's a little bit lighter weight and smaller. So you could really go to town with this, making it really delicate or really big and chunky. It's really up to you and the style you're going for. So, you, so I'd like to show you a few examples first, and then we'll get started making a few different ones. You can have it something very simple. This is just a little piece of twine with some gold beads attached to it. This is a little more intricate, still just beads knotted on a piece of rat tail. Same thing here, I made a little pattern. And this is beautiful, any of these, just hanging out of the end of a book. It can either be below the book or in the book, depending on the thickness and what you're looking for. Here's some more beads, but with a little bells for some noise. Here's a much larger dangle. Same thing here with three bells on them. Here's one that isn't Christmassy per se. It's got a beautiful key, a little jingle bell, and a bead. You can remove the bell and just have an interesting dangle for a fabric book. And here's yet another one with some ribbon and a Christmas charm. So let's get started making some of these and I'll show you some of the basic supplies to get you thinking about what materials you can use. So to get started, you'll need something that's gonna dangle from your string. So there are pendants, little charms. This is a broken piece of jewelry. I think it was some sort of button and that would work nicely. A little bell and the snowman face. A little pendant. This is just a very flat and thin Christmas ornament. I would cut off this little string and I have a cute little dangle at the end of it. And then there are these. These are actual dangles. They have little jump rings on them and they have a little movement to them. So that's something you can use. You can use beads and there's so much more you can think of. But these are just some things to give you an idea. And if you wanted to, you could just string ribbon alone. You don't need to have a dangle. But then again, there's ribbon to use, lace, lace and ribbon, which I think is a great um, piece. You can use twine, more ribbon. And then this one is pretty much done for you. It's ribbon that I purchased last year. They call it gift trim. And it's twine and ribbon, and it's got some buttons and beads already on it. So it's already got interest. So that might be of interest to you if you have that in your stash be with your Christmas supplies. So now let's make a couple of these. Let's start with the most basic one where we just knot everything together. So here I'll use this twine. I like to cut a length of twine far longer than I'll need. And I can always double it up as well. This just gives a more secure result. We'll start with this little bell so I'll take my twine and double it up. I'll just fold it in half, and then I'll thread my folded half through the bobble here, the little bell, and I have a little lanyard knot. And so from here, I could stitch the top of this in between my book pages or even onto the book pages. Depending on the depth I want, I have a simple little dangle. So now I wanna use this ribbon here going to use this ornament so I'll just clip it the string to remove that I have my little ornament here and there are holes at either end so I can sew either end I'm going to fold once over and then flip that over again so that there's no raw ends showing make sure I tuck my ribbon I'll come in there with some thread stitch it down just a couple of stitches to hold it in place
I'll go down again into the piece and come out the bottom. And now I'll just snip the side here just to get rid of that tail. And from here, I'll just thread through the ornament. And I'll stitch a few times just to hold it in place. After I've stitched it sufficiently, I'll just knot the back here. And I have another dangle. Now for the last one that we're gonna make, I'll use this lace, I think it's beautiful. And I think I'll take this little pendant angel. Again, I can just thread it through it and use the lanyard knot because it has an opening here. But I think what I'm gonna do is just stitch it by folding up my lace again, and then just stitch it right on top. It won't dangle the way this one does. It'll be a little more secure. So again, I've double folded my lace. I'm gonna come in there and just stitch from in between those layers couple of stitches to hold it in place. Then I'll come up, add my little pendant, and I'll stitch around it a number of times until I'm confident that it's secure and it will hang nicely on the dangle. So that's three more dangles I can use in my fabric books. They also make pretty little ornaments hanging on a tree or just attached to a gift. So that's how I create a page dangle to use in my fabric book. There are so many variations on this and I think I'm picturing using all of them in my book. I'd love to have dangles on each page. It'll make the book chunky and add interest. You'll have to interact with those dangles, moving them out of the way to see what's underneath. I really like that interactive element. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. That really helps my channel. And if you'd like additional content, please become a paid member of my channel. Thanks for joining me today.